Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen and this is Hard Rock University. This episode of my uh, Extracted Metallurgy series is on settling. Now settling is the process of a solid particle dropping downward under the force of gravity through a fluid. It could be air, it could be water, it could be something else. It's usually dirty water. Now settling is fairly ubiquitous. You see it all the time. You understand it intuitively, but it obeys some very precise laws. And the settling velocity of a particle is determined by its density, its shape, its size, the viscosity of the surrounding medium. It can also change depending upon the force of gravity or call it pseudogravity. If you use like a centrifugal concentrator or something, you can get a lot of G's. But I'm specifically talking about settling in a 1G field, so we'll forget that. Now, different density particles will behave differently. If you have a particle of gold and a particle of silica the same size, the gold will settle 10 times faster. If you have a particle of silica and a particle of gold that are settling at the same velocity and they're the same shape, the silica will be 3.3 roughly times the diameter and will have about 30 times the volume of the gold particle. And this characteristic of settling particles can be used in a number of ways to make your life easier. So, first of all, let me show you, this is just a regular ball jar, and I put in uh, some crushed rock and some water, and I shook it up. And you can see that the top of the solids layer there is not actually even solid yet. It's been about an hour, hour and a half, but the smaller particles have formed a layer, a high density layer there that's pretty well separated from the water. And there's the larger particles and as time went on smaller and smaller particles. Now let's see what happens when I shake this up and see just how fast that occurs. Let's turn it around here. As you can see, the larger particles are forming a packed mass in seconds. And this allows you to do a lot of stuff at a fairly good rate of speed. I mean, we're already solid somewhere around here now. So, the most common use of settling is for clarification of water. It may not be actually clear, but you need it to um, especially in a gravity concentration, you can't use thin mud. You have to use dirty water. It has to be low viscosity, which means not enough fine solids to change how thick the water is. And this solids content, typically you want to be less than 10% solids if in a gravity separation. And if you're running a standard gravity separation in a steady state situation, it's going to take a lot of settling to clarify that water enough to be reused, to get down to like 1% solids or something. Now, I use this tub next to my hydromatic for testing, but this is a batch process. I will only run, you know, quarter ton or something at a whack. Then I will stop and I'll do stuff and I'll take samples and blah, blah, blah. And it has plenty of time to settle. If I was going to run this same equipment continuously for like an eight hour shift with everything else being the same, I would need a much bigger settling basin than what I've got right here. The bigger the basin, the better the settling. To keep the... Uh, the water clear enough to do your diet. It doesn't have to be clear, just thin enough of, you know, low enough solids content. You want to be 
high up on the level of the the water in a deep basin you know many feet deep or several feet deep you may make a little float and hang your pump from the float and this way the the pump is always staying in the cleanest water and whatever size you can just take a a hole in the ground line it with plastic and that may be all you need to do your job and that's a, a very important and useful thing it's it's done all over the place sand and gravel pits etc filtering water is well filtering anything tends to be very expensive energy intensive maintenance intensive filters plug they have to be cleaned etc etc as a general rule if all you got to do is get relatively clean liquid then settling will work better than filtration if you need really clean liquid yeah you may have to go filtration but you'll usually settle first now if all you need is fairly clean liquid and you know uh, a high density slurry then you would usually use something called a thickener and what it does is it sends most of the solids one way and most of the liquids the other way and it does it in a very very simple manner it's basically a funnel with the slurry being introduced at one side and then pouring out over the other side now usually it's square as opposed to round but as it flows across the heavier solid the larger particles will fall to the bottom and as you saw in my little ball jar this can happen relatively quickly depending upon the size of the particles the density of particles and what you need to achieve you would size the um, thickener accordingly and so what do you do with the heavies that settle down here well you put a valve on the bottom and you run them wherever you need them to run and by adjusting the valve and therefore the flow rate you adjust the flow through the upper part of the funnel here or the thickener and to a certain extent that can adjust the particle sizes depending upon where they go the split as they call it this would be the overflow and this would be the underflow makes sense doesn't it now these thickeners can be very very large at the big copper mines around here they have something called a door thickener uh, and they'll typically have well like on a 30,000 ton a day mill you know four of them a hundred feet across now here's what a door thickener is it's a diagram you can see it basically has a conical bottom but in order to facilitate the movement of the high density slurry it has sweeps that move at a very slow speed and just kind of pushes that slurry towards the center where it can be drained out from there it goes to a what they call a tailings ponds where it settles out and they push a berm up and and just keep making the pile bigger and bigger and bigger then the clarified liquid a relatively clear liquid goes back to the milling process if you need it more clear you could even add a little bit of a flocculant if that doesn't mess up whatever process you're going to need it gets the small particles to stick together settle to the bottom <clears throat> now because high density particles and low density particles uh, behave differently you can do some interesting things now first of all if you just want to sort by settling velocity you can use something called a hydraulic classifier which is essentially a v-shaped trough with a couple of barriers and some drains and you pour the slurry in one end and the big stuff falls here and the smaller stuff falls there and the real small stuff falls there and the stuff that won't fall at all goes off of there and by doing this you're essentially screening it without screens where screens also very mechanically intensive um, they, they slow things down they get real expensive and they're a maintenance headache if you were like sorting silica sand by size 
you could do it very successfully this way without any kind of screens at all. Um, if you're going to run a gravity process for a milling, uh, a gravity milling situation, for example, the first compartment might get the stuff that's so big that you want to regrind it. The second compartment may be just fine. The third compartment may be also. But now that they've they have the same settling velocity, what you want to do is size them by physical size. If you take these uh, mixtures of particle size, the small gold, the coarse silica, and you put it over an intermediate size screen, the silica goes one way and the gold goes through. This is a way you can uh, separate the heavies from the light material. And there's something even more efficient at this process than that, and that's something called a hindered settling thickener, or elutriation. Elutriation is basically a rising column of uh, fluid to kind of suspend the particles. Now, with my impact mill, I use a high-velocity airflow to suspend the lighter particles of, of broken material while the heavier particles just fall straight back down into the mill. And as such, I get a much finer grind without having to screen it. Now, it's not, they're not 100% perfect, but if I just put a bigger pipe on it, then I could get an even finer grind. And the beauty of that, say, there's no moving parts involved. It makes it real simple to get the same settling velocity in air particle or, or group. Um, and that's what you're looking for, to, to do some kind of a sort, which then you do something else that behaves differently. Um, in a hindered settling thickener, and here's a diagram of one, the particles are sorted according to settling velocity. So in the first compartment you'd have the larger gang materials, gang again being a really fancy word for crap, generally silica, calcite, fluorite, things like that, the, the, the wall rock, feldspars. Um, and smaller particles of high density minerals, your, your sulfides, your you know, galena, your gold, things like this. They'll settle to the bottom there. And again, you, you form a, a product coming out the bottom that will have small high-density particles and large low-density particles. It's very predictable. And so you can put a screen in between there and get a pretty darn good sort. Also, when you take particles that are relatively well sorted and put them over a different type of gravity extraction, say a table, where now it's, it's sorting them, they actually form layers, well, you can get an even better separation if it's finally, uh, uh, you know, tightly classified. Now, just to give you an idea of what kind of numbers we're talking about, I crunched them out the other day. There's, there's a something called Stokes Law, and you can go on the internet and get calculators. It'll calculate the settling velocity of a particle by punching in all these things. The one thing that really annoyed the crap out of me was the first two calculators I got, they wanted the viscosity in units that when you Google viscosity of water, it's not there. Okay, Viscosity of water is normally in centipoise, and then you'd have to figure out what a poise is. But anyhow, I finally found one that, that gave that, so I was able to calculate it. Now, numbers I'm interested in are, first of all, the input screen on my table is a 30 mesh screen. And that's about as coarse as you're likely to get decent mineral liberation, so that's one number I'm looking at. My dewatering screen is a 60 mesh screen. 100 mesh is the size at which you 
Well, we usually get mineral liberation. Usually if you crush it and screen it to 100 mesh, you're going to have good liberation. And then my gold particle size in Mojave 1 that I'm actually able to pan out is down there around 25 microns, which is 550 mesh. That's what I'm actually able to see in my pan. So let's start at the big stuff. Okay, the settling velocity of a 30 mesh silica particle sphere is about uh, 0.344 meters per second. Okay, about a foot per second through water. Pretty fast. Gold, on the other hand, is 3.76 meters per second. <laughs> Again, 10 times as fast. So if you had a flow coming across, it's all 30 mesh or minus, the 30 mesh silica will go over a barrier while the 30 mesh gold will drop way before the barrier. Yeah, somewhere probably around 70, 80 mesh gold particles will drop where a 30 mesh silica particle will. Okay, then there's your next <laughs> thing. Uh, 60 mesh uh, silica is 0 0.065 meters per second and gold is 0 0.71. Uh, 100 mesh 0 0.023 meters per second for silica, 0.25 meters per second for gold. Well, it's still almost, I mean, it's 100 mesh gold, it's still dropping almost a foot per second through water. Now, let's get down to the really fine stuff. This is the crap I got to try and separate. And this 550 mesh silica drops at 6.5 millimeters per second. Uh, sorry. 0.65 millimeters per second, whereas the gold drops at 7 millimeters per second. 7 millimeters is about a third of an inch. So, this much versus that much. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big, big difference. Again, you can set a flow going, go across a, a, a barrier, and split the flow. It's a very useful tool. So, that gives you the kind of settling velocities you need. These are the numbers you'd crunch to figure out how big a settling basin you need, etc., etc., to get what you want. But, as I say, it's a very, very useful trick to be able to do. So, this has just been a basic overview of how settling can sometimes be used to help you out. Remember, if you screen and you settle, they're, you're classifying by different methods, and you will tend to get a recovery. You know, if, if you let it settle and then screen it at the right size, small gold particles, large silica particles, you can make a pretty good separation. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope it stimulated a lot of thought out there. And you guys come up with some really good ideas on how to make this help you. And uh, happy prospecting. Keep it safe out there.